It's Charlie and welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. In this Photoshop tutorial, you will learn how to take photos and turn them into t-shirt designs. Are you ready? Let's go. Fair warning, I am really sick today, so I'm stuffy, but uh, nonetheless, I went on unsplash.com to start off and just found some photos that I wanted to use. And it's also important to note that I was referencing a Nocta Loose design, which used a female face and some glasses. And this is a lesson that I did with one of my students from Merch Design Academy. So if you guys want to learn one on one, all you have to do is go to MerchDesignAcademy.com to sign up. I opened up a 15 inch by 18 inch document at 300 resolution. And then I just created a rectangle with the rectangle tool. It's right where your shape builder tools are. And then I typed out the band's name, which is Nocta Loose. And I just stuck with a really simple, Times New Roman font for this. And as you can see, I'm just kind of placing it wherever right now. I'm not too concerned about that. What I'm more concerned about is filling up that space inside of that rectangle, which we will do with the images that I downloaded. I added a stroke layer style to the text just to give it a little thickness and also around the corners because it was a little sharp due to it being Times New Roman but that made it look pretty cool. And then I broke every graphic design role and warped the text by transforming it and just making it taller. I went through all the images that I imported and I found the ones that I really liked. I ended up going with this girl with these like cool bokeh balls in the background, but I did resize her because I wanted to focus on just the glasses and her lips. And of course I needed more than one image, so I'm just stacking all these images on top of each other and using different blending options like a soft round brush, for example, with a layer mask to just sort of hide certain parts of each image that I don't want to show. And of course I needed to clip these images to the rectangle to hide it within that shape. Really easy stuff, it's just kind of repetitive, honestly. And it's also really good to work in black and white so you can see the different gray values to see what is brighter and what's darker. One thing I do to make everything black and white is just add a hue and saturation adjustment layer which can be found at the bottom of the layers palette where that circle icon is. You add a hue and saturation layer above everything and just drop the saturation to zero and it will make everything below it black and white which is really really useful for again seeing the gray values, uh, seeing what is light and what's too dark and just kind of trying to match them so it looks like one cohesive piece. And you're going to see me use a lot of blend modes such as screen, multiply, and even like blend if under the blending options just to try to eliminate certain tones of an image to blend better with the uh, girl's face. And, and this is just part of the process of trial and error. Try things out. I'm even grabbing images from unsplash.com like this piece of glass right here just to kind of see if it adds to the image or doesn't add to it. And you'll even see me adding like a levels adjustment right here just because it didn't blend very good. So let's recap what I'm using so far. So again, we're using level adjustments, clipping masks, layer masks, and the soft round brush. Don't hesitate to use all these tools together to create the final result that you're trying to go for, right? You just have to get comfortable with that chaos. Once you do that, you can really just create anything. Now. I'm going to go a little further right now and I had to go to unsplash.com again to find some hands because I realized I'm lacking that in my design. So again, I'm just resizing them, repositioning them. After playing with the blend modes for a little bit and using like a, again, a soft round brush, a layer mask, I was able to blend it pretty nicely and come up with something that looks like it belongs. And again, what's selling this effect at the end is the filter gallery effects that I use all the time. And that's what we're gonna be applying right now. Before I apply my filter gallery effects, what I like to do is go into the camera raw filter, add some contrast and bring out the shadows and also add clarity and texture and maybe even a little dehaze since we have glass. And since we're using different images, I also wanted to use it to add depth to my design. Now it's time to apply the filter gallery effect to everything. You just wanna make sure your background is white and your foreground is black. And you can just copy my settings, honestly. I, I apply torn edges above grain, and sometimes I even use that with halftone pattern. Once you add torn edges and grain, you can even apply a stamp above it and just play with the different settings, right? You have these sliders that do different things. So honestly, my recommendation is if you're not familiar with how they work, just slide them around and see what it does to your image. That's how I learned, and that's how you will ultimately learn every image is going to be different. So even if you copy my settings, it's not going to look exactly the same because your images are probably going to be different and the way you process them will also be different. So don't get discouraged, just have fun with it. And if you guys love this video and you want more, subscribe to Merch Design Academy, which is my dedicated merch design tutorial channel. And you guys will learn a ton completely free. Definitely don't wanna miss it. I'll see you guys in the next one.